pleasant good morning to all our listeners and viewers out there to our regular listeners and viewers for Pastor's Corner. It's another Tuesday morning and we are delighted to join you again and already a number of you are, are there um, and we are happy that you are there and um, we are here for another Pastor's Corner, another Pastor's Corner and I believe as usual we'll have an intriguing time here as we um, have some questions that we want to ask some of our guests this morning. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin this morning's Pastor's Corner. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. Thank you for um, allowing us to be here this morning. And as we get ready for another Pastor's Corner, bless all our listeners, all our viewers, and may this program be an inspirational program to all this is my prayer in Jesus' name. So, yeah. as usual, um, please, um, you know, share the link. Let your friends know that um, Pastor Scorner is here. Of course, if you are, if you are a fan, then of course you you would know you would get the, um, you would know that we are on. But of course, persons are sometimes involved in other activities. And um, it's difficult for them to join. So, um, but we already we are happy to have uh, Sister Isaac, Stedlin, and Sister Lindona, and um, Alicia. Well, of course, these are regular um, persons and many others. We're happy to have you this morning. This morning we have two young pastors with us. Um, you know, two young scholars um, with us. I, I you know, um, to my extreme, to my extreme right, we have Pastor Stephen. Francois. Good morning, Pastor Francois. Good morning, Pastor Isaac. How are you doing today? I'm okay, you know, by God's grace. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, to my immediate right, we have Pastor Jason Charles. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. And Pastor how are you doing? I'm, I'm great, thank you. Oh, wonderful. Pastor, do, do, you, do you know that this is your last Pastor's Corner? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, folks, you're wondering, why, why is this the last Pastor's Corner? Well, Pastor Charles is, um, if, if you have any viewers or listeners from Trinidad, Pastor Charles is getting ready to come over, um, you know, he's coming over to you there. So um, this morning will be his last Pastor's Corner for, for this time with us here at the Grenada Conference. And we're delighted to have him to share um, with you. And while we, you know, we'll miss him, but there are some persons in Trinidad will be happy that he's coming. <laughs> Pastor, I see you smiling, not so? Amen, amen. Praise God. Wonderful, wonderful. So um, we're looking at um, children and their decision for Christ. Mm. You know, children yeah. and their decision for Christ. We have um, men making decision for Christ. We have women making decision for Christ. We have youth making decision for Christ. That's right. So we believe that children can also make decisions for Christ. Amen. So that's what um, we'll be talking about today. Um, even as, of course... It's the final few days of um, the evangelistic series that has been running. This is the fifth week. Uh, you know, time goes by so fast. And many of you may have been, of course, no doubt, tuning in. Um, Pastor Samuels, um, you know, from Jamaica. And, of course, children have been surrendering their life to Jesus oh, yes. as well. Amen. Um, so we thank God for that. So we're just looking at the, the subject in, in keeping the same theme, um, you know, for evangelism. So, um pastors my first question is what are some of the most important decisions children need to make in their lifetime pastor francois some of the most important decisions that children make in their lifetime as 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 children okay you know? well, thank you pastor um some of the most important decisions that their children make is usually um who the friends that they keep or the friends that they choose to have uh -huh. and that is important because there would there's a saying that tell me your friend i'll tell you who you are so in regards to that, child, it, it, uh, one of the decisions is, is the friends that they keep. And some children, it's one of the decisions that, the, some of the decisions that they make also is the places where they would go, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Because that is important. Why? Why, Pastor? Why? Because places? the places that they go will determine um, your, the end result of what would happen. For instance, if a child would just leave home and go to the beach alone, that child can join, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And the parents would be responsible for that child action. So the child should make that proper decision. Do not go where you shouldn't go. You understand? 
and that is important. Also, um, one of the most indecisive decisions that children need to make also, some of them would like to go to Christian schools. So they would ask their parents to send me to this school. Why? Because this school teaches about Jesus. Okay. And that so, is very important. So these are some yeah. of the um, things that you think as a child, um, you know, quite relevant as to um, the, 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 the choice of friends, as you, you, you know, yeah. you indicate. But before I go yeah. to Pastor yeah. Charles, before I go over to Pastor Charles, Pastor Francois, um, it, it's a virtual world, um, you know. So, so that decision of choosing friends, you know, when we were growing up, your parents would say, be, be careful who you associate with that is in the physical sense, you know, because yeah, there's no yeah. virtual world then, really, you know. Um, but, but now, um, the reality of the virtual world is there. So um, a parent saying to a child, um, you know, a guardian saying to a child, be careful you, the way, uh, you know, your friends you choose at school. And the child could be very careful with that. But in the virtual world, that doesn't apply. So how how do, how does how can it be we how can we be assured? How can parents help influence children making decisions relative to the choice of friends in the virtual world? All right, that's a wonderful question. Um, I'm no scholar, but I know by the grace of God, I will try out attempt. <laughs> um, in regards to children, and that is important because. Children usually go to Facebook, Pastor, and they may accept friends from people they don't know. And that can be very detrimental because it's, it's similar to inviting someone into your home who you don't know. And in the virtual aspect, the parents should take, parents should have an idea who their children's friends are. They should have, and they should have some monopoly in regards to the friends that the, 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 the children accept on Facebook. And therefore, I, I just want to admonish parents that they should, they should talk. They should talk. I'm saying, I'm saying their pastor because I'm not a parent as yet. Okay, okay. I'm saying as Pastor Isaac, they should talk to your children in terms of who to accept as your friends on Facebook because everybody would just would see the request and they would just accept people after people. And Pastor, there are some... Predators out there, Pastor, that are dangerous. Okay, wonderful. So parents should, should be in, so involved in their children's social, uh, social not just the social media, but virtual experience so much that they should provide guide to their children in who to accept as their friend and who not to accept. Amen. Wonderful. So, um, Pastor Charles, you're itching to, to jump in the conversation. Um, tell us about some of the, well, all the most important decisions. Well, just to add to Pastor Franz, well, um, what the Bible says, um, there's we love, um, like to use a scriptural text. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. And so, um, children, the most important decision children need to make is to ensure to put Christ first. Um, spend time in prayer. Um, spend time in studying the word of God. Um, they should um, let me study the Bibles every day. Um, pray every day. Um, they need to um, look at um, appropriate um, shows um, on, on, on television. They, ha they have to. Um, they need to um, listen to appropriate music. Um, they need to be careful of the type of music that they listen to. And so, th um, these are some of the um, decisions that th that they need to make in life. Okay, as as children, yeah. Um, so the, what we what we're saying is that children don't have to grow up and then begin to make those decisions. True. Even sure. from a child, those those decisions has to be made. Amen. What music I listen to, um, Pastor Charles, you're talking about watching the television. Well, um, you know, <laughs> sometimes I wonder if television is not obsolete <laughs> in the sense because Must. you know it's the smart, you know, the device. Yeah. So. So many of our children now has those devices. So, you know, the, the, not so much the television. What do you watch on your device? device <laughs> you know, sure. um, which is very important. That's Sister right. Stedley is saying parents need to teach their children the good and bad in this world so that the child can then be able to make the right yeah. decision. That, that's so true, Sister Stedley. Um, we, we as parents need to make the, um, teach the good and bad, so that they make the right decision. But, and Pastor, just before you move on, um, while we're teaching them the good and the bad, we need to admonish them to choose good. 
Okay, all right. Um, Ju- Deuteronomy. Yeah, <laughs> Deuteronomy. It, it I, talks I, about that. I give you, I put before you life and death. Exactly. But then, the you know, it was said, um, Moses then said, choose life. Exactly. Not, notwithstanding that God placed between, you know, before us life and death. But of course, be wise and choose um, choose life. Choose life. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. So, what's the most appropriate age? for making a decision. And when we say making a decision here, we're really talking about accepting Christ in baptism. So every time I use a term, that's essentially what I'm referring to. What is the most appropriate age for a child to accept Jesus Christ in baptism? Do we have such? What is it? Um, because there is no um, specific age. There should not be no specific age for a child to um, make a decision to accept Jesus. What is important is the child understanding of what they are requesting or wanting to do. And that is important. Because you may, a child may want to get baptized, but why do you want to get baptized? I don't know, they will say. That's not wrong to be baptized, to get baptized. And the reason why there, is, there shouldn't be any specific age, again, is because some children are much mature mentally than others. So therefore, a nine-year-old may not know what baptism is. But a, a seven-year-old may know. They may understand to that degree. So based on the understanding of those children, they will determine whether or not that they should be should get baptized. Okay, so um, Pastor Charles, Pastor yeah. Francois just said that no specific age and based upon the um, development of that child. So if Pastor Charles, I'm putting a direct question on you, know, um, probably that will determine, you know, um, the, the, your answer with it. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of your ministry. So if, if a child, you know, there's some brilliant little children. So a child is four years old and four year old mm-hmm. and seem to understand everything past the child. Do you think that child should be baptized? Well, well, for me, I, I believe um, the most appropriate age. Um, well, normally we, we baptize um, children at, at the age of eight. And so um, for me, I, I, I strongly believe that um, when they um around age eight, eight and 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 upwards, um we can baptize them. Um I, I I agree that they should have some um level of understanding. Um they should understand um the doctrines of, of the Seventh day Adventist Church. Um they should understand um the scriptures both in the old and the new testament, very important. And so Yes, there are children. There are children at the age four, five. Um, they, they probably they, they have some level of understanding, um, but they may not have all. So, to me, I believe that at the age of eight, um, eight or nine, because some some children could be um, at the age of nine, um, and they may not have that that level of 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 understanding, um, and so. Um, some children they may they may ask for baptism, um, for uh, uh, for baptism, and to me I believe that the, at the age of eight, as we normally do, or or ten or nine, we can baptize them. Okay, so you you're saying um, a child at the, the while there is no specific age, but a ch- a child ranging from the age of eight normally you should be able to have some reasonable understanding. That's right. Um, relative to the decision that child wants to make. So um, we noticed quite a a number of um, um, comments are coming in. Um, You know, Sister Ruth is saying children are not supposed to be on Facebook. Facebook. There is a legal age for Facebook, so parents should monitor that. Other platforms they use and can our smart parents, we have to be on top of things. Of course, of yeah. course, of course, of course. But um, since the person you know mm-hmm. that there are some parents, as you rightly say, there are some students, there are some children who, I mean, outsmart their parents by far because that's the age. We, 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 I'm saying we, we have to learn that. Yeah, we, we have to learn that. They, they don't have to learn. They, it just, it just, it comes natural for them. So, um, so, you know, um, those things are to be expected. So, but what we're saying here, I think we, we don't want to miss the point that while we um, don't have a specific age, but we we know 
a, a child after age seven, you know, age, the reasoning powers of what, you know, is the habits are formed around that time, you know, unless, I mean, normal child, that is, the normal child. Yes, so thereafter, persons can be, begin to make decisions for Christ. You may have the, the odd child who at five or six, you know, quite understanding some things, but, you know, we, we, we normally would not baptize a child um, that young. Because, of course, I mean, um, knowing that the developmental process is still, is still um, taking place. And so it, yeah. while it, there is no specific age, mm -hmm. but as a guide, we have that uh, we normally function with. Pastor, okay. you I want just want to quote from Ellen G. White, um, our prophetess. She says in Testimonies, Volume 1, page 169, children of 8, 10, or 12 years are old enough to be addressed on the subject of personal religion right so they are old enough to to be addressed okay um, so the, yeah, so, so that's the age you're giving age eight ten or twelve and that's what we're saying that that's, that's right. once you reach that point uh, you should be able to um you know um have um some level of understanding amen you know to um to go forward um someone is saying i wanted to get baptized to eat bread and wine as a child but later on, I understood the principle of it. Well, um, actually, um, you're not alone on that matter. Um, should I say? I have a son who indicated to me recently that that's what he got baptized for, <laughs> eating communion bread. Yes. You know, um, people may come to pass. You know, people may come to Jesus for the wrong reason. True, true. Yeah, but but um, you may not all get it understanding when you come. But while being there. Oh, yeah. You know, everything else will, will fall into place. So even if you came for the wrong reason as a child or even a grown up, um, you know, getting to know Jesus and eventually staying with Jesus is the most important, important. thing. Yes, you see? Pastor, and um, as you are, you are right fully, what you said is right. Um, sometimes parents think, like, you know, some parents will say, well, I don't want my child to get baptized because he's not, he or she is not ready yet. And when we ask them why, and they would give certain reasons, they don't understand everything yet. And the truth is, even as a pastor, we don't understand every, we don't, we don't even understand everything in the Bible. But day by day, God would reveal as you continue to grow, as we spend time in the Word of God, God would, God, our faith and our confidence in God would increase, and day by day we would grow in our spiritual life. So therefore, a child may be young; they may have a reasonable understanding why they want to get baptized. And therefore, if that is, if the reasonable, if the understanding is there in the child, as they say, not every child mature at the same age, and not age doesn't come with maturity. You understand? So therefore, it's important for us to understand that, hey, children, once they have that reasonable understanding of what baptism is, and that they love Jesus, and that they want to be saved, that is enough, Pastor. That is enough to get baptized. Also, some may have the misunderstanding that they want to eat the communion bread. And that's okay, that's okay. Since you since the children departments are pre is present, then for the, the, the process of training would continue. Okay. Amen. All right. Um, so we, we're moving on, Pastor. So should children consult their parents before making decisions for Christ? And that again, that decision we're referring to baptism. Um, should children consult the parents? Um, let me be very specific here. A child who's 10. Um, is hearing the gospel and knows, uh, you know, you know, attends church, and and knows about it, knows about the decision, know, knows that a church has planned a baptism. So the child packed his or her bag, um, you know, whisper to the pastor, pastor, I would like to get baptized, and 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 go down and get baptized without, you know, and and surprising the parent. Should should a child do that? Well, of course, um, children need to um needs to consult their their parents first. They need to consult their parents um about um giving their life to Jesus Christ in baptism. Um, we have to remember that um, children they live under their parents' roof, um, and so um it's very important. Um, they need to consult their parents first, um, so that they can. Um, get the, the okay or the permission um, to go all the way with Jesus Christ in baptism. And so, well, the, the pastors, um, as pastors, um, once children indicate that they want to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism, as ministers of the gospel, we need to go and speak to the parents, get their the consent um, 
um, for the children to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism. So All very right. important. So so that's an important point, Pastor. You're saying that the, the pastor should not collude with, with with children to to um not inform the parents. You're saying that in fact, if even if the child did not tell the parent, and which you're saying the child should. That's right. But then once the pastor has that information, the pastor should then make it his duty to, to speak, um, consult um, with the parent about the child's decision. That's because exactly. the child may have said that to Pastor Francois, you want to chip in on that? Yeah, I just want to concur with my dear colleague there. Um, because the child, well, as you said, you said age 10, and I will just lean on the word that you said 10, that number. Because of the age of the child, it is important that the parents be contacted and speak to and let them know of the child or children's decision. Because it is, it is um, not just unethical, but it, it would be disrespectful for a pastor to just take someone's child and just baptize them without their knowledge of it. That, would, that, is, that is a disrespect. And although, yes, the child is in, would, be insist, would insist that they want to get baptized, but at the same time, as a form of courtesy pastor, at age 10, we must speak to the parents to let them know of their child or children's intention. Um, mm -hmm. You say age 10, but... A child is, if you're 16, you're still a child. Well, true. Well, well the, the, the pastor, um, at age 16, I, I got baptized. I never told my, my parents, no, I told my aunt who I was staying with. But if there is any issue at age 16, where it, as it regards to salvation, pastor would encourage that individual to choose salvation. Because at the end of the day, Salvation is more important. As I, I using the, the number that said age 16, that is a reasonable age. Because some at age 16, Pastor, some children are going places without their parents' knowledge. You understand? I, I last year carnival, I, when I was coming up to Pastor's Corner, I see children six, seven. I was shocked. Oh, you mean pe last year people played carnival? There was no carnival. People there was played no carnival. carnival. They played jazz. Have mercy. Little children, I see them. Plus, I was so shocked coming back from Pastor's Corner and children seven. Eight, nine years. I was shocked because I know Jab Jab is a thing for bigger, for adults. So if a seven year old, a, a, a ten year old can go and play Jab Jab, and when they go home, their parents don't not even question in them, Pastor. A child who is 16 years old and want to get baptized, yes, should inform their parents that they're getting baptized. I believe they should inform them and make okay. a decision. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, as you said, respect. You're living with your parents. You want to make a decision, you should go and, and say, Mother, Father, you know, I, I have decided to give my life to Jesus in baptism. Now, what you do after that will determine on you. On you you know, if, the, if, if your parents say, Well, I don't think that's the right thing to do um, at 16, you know, you, you have to make that decision. But I think it's still respectful, respectful yes. to um, your living with your parents to say, uh, You know, I, I, I am planning to give my life to Christ in baptism, you know, because. While, you see, whatever we do for God, we want to do it, you know, um, with, with right, rightful representation. So mm -hmm. I understand that people, children 12, 13, play, and the children don't know, the parents don't know about it and get involved in carnival-like activities. But when it comes to serving the Lord, we want the children to do the right thing by informing the parents, telling the parents, seeking the permission when it's needed, and informing when it's, you know, at other times yeah. that they're making such a decision. That, I think that is very important, yeah. right? Um, someone says, um, was that Chairman Bihari? He said, yes, if the pa parents agree that children be baptized. Um, again, that is, uh, you know, we, we, we know children in our context here is right up under 18, well, uh, 17 down, or, you know, so he say, if you say 8 to 17, relative for baptismal age. Um, so the child who is eight is a child, and the post child who is seventeen is a child. But the but the child who is eight and the child who is seventeen has different responsibility. One may have to yes. ask, and the other That's one has to say inform. That's That's true. True. Listen, I have, I make a decision to give my life to Christ. I'm seventeen. Yeah. Um, of course, you still live with your parents, and they're still responsible for you. But at seventeen, you can take the consequences. If 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 your parents decide, hey, um, you if you do this, this will happen. You you can deal with that. Rather than, I mean, differently than if you were, you know, eight or nine. So I, th I think that yeah, there's a difference. Just add a little. Um, I will encourage parents. You, know, you may have children who are so desirous in giving their life to Jesus Christ. You know, do not say no. Let them accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. That's the best de decision um, children can make. 
Let them live for Jesus. Let them be for Jesus. Okay, wonderful. No, no, um, um, pastors. Exodus twenty twelve says, "Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long on the land that the Lord your God is giving you." Um, if a child proceeds to accept Christ without the parents' consent, is that dishonoring the parents? Um, it's a technical question, Pastor. Just read over the question. <laughs> <laughs> have mercy. Well, the Bible does say in, in Exodus um, chapter 20 and verse 12, actually, it's a part of the commandment. commandment. It's the fifth commandment. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long, um, that's a new international version, in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. My question is, if a child proceeds to accept Christ without seeking the permission of the parent is that dishonoring the parent? No, Pastor, it's not this is not dishonoring the parent. Um, when it comes to salvation, in terms of one personal decision to follow Christ, Christ all the way, because your parents cannot. Um, let me use age. We cannot use the age range, Pastor. It's important the child proceed so that means the child accept I have given their life to yes, Jesus. Yes, they went ahead and do it. Right. Um, I don't think that is this honoring their parents. It's actually honoring God, and in the long run, it would be honoring their parents because after a while, Pastor, the parents would notice that that child did the best, make the best decision. At inception, it may so it may seem as though their child is being disrespectful or rude in regards to not informing. But when we come, when it comes to salvation, because Pastor, you cannot save me, you know. My parents cannot save me. It's only Christ who have died to save myself, to save me and not given me salvation. So if a child proceeded to accept Jesus and then we told tell informing the parents before, I don't think that is dishonoring them. Okay. Um Pastor well, well, let, me, let me try to answer that, <laughs> to answer that question. Um well the Bible says honor your parents, that like these may be long. And and we need to obey our parents. And so so the, the, there are children who want to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism. And they didn't tell the parents. And they did not tell the parents. So the question is that is this but honoring them? This honoring them. For me, I will be honest. Um I will say yes, that is being um disobedient. Um let me let me go further with it. Let me say that. Children who make up their minds to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism, God takes records of it. He, know, he knows the hearts of the children. And so if parents do not want their, their children to be baptized, God already knows <coughs> and took record of, of the children that is so desirous of giving their life um, to Jesus Christ in baptism. And so... Um, I do not see children, you know, just going ahead, you know, because they, they are living, they are living under the, the parents' roof. No, and, okay. and, and so I believe, I believe they should, they should not go ahead and baptize. Um, they should, um, God, God knows the heart. He knows the heart of the children. He, he took record of it. And, and it, um, I believe the, the Holy Spirit is at work. The time will come. When, when, when the parents will, will understand and, and, and when, they, when that child or children give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism, um, they'll be rejoicing at the end. Okay, so um, I didn't, remember the, the question is that the, the child, is not that the child didn't form the parent. The child indicated, and remember we, look, we, we, we have a range. When you say children, mm -hmm. we can, we, uh, you know, we, um, we're looking at the age of, a, well, we, we did establish at the beginning that not, there isn't necessarily an age. But if we start with the, with um, eight up to seventeen, mm -hmm. it's still child. If you know what I'm saying, so we're keeping in the, that 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 span in mind. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the child didn't inform. So a fifteen year old or sixteen year old didn't. In, it's not that they didn't inform or request. So the parents is aware. It's just that they proceeded. My question is, if they proceed to do it without the consent, meaning the parents knew about it, mm -hmm. but they didn't say yes, you know. Um, my question is that dishonoring them, and um, of course, the 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 um, is the way the the attitude of a of a ten year old 
um, will be di different from the children of a 17 year old, you know, because they, they, they're, they're both children under the law here in, 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 this, in Grenada, but they, um, they, sh they should be viewed differently. So um, I, I, would, I would add further that, and, 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 both, and support both of you relative to um, children respecting the parents. You know, you, you live with your parents, you should respect them, you know. And, and, and not only children, you, you are married, you are a big grown person, and you, you should make your decision. But if you give your life to Christ, I think you, you respect your wife and tell your wife. It's not because you're grown, you, you're not saying anything. So we don't want to respect, you know. That, 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 should, be, that should be the case. Um, but dishonor is a different thing. So we, we, make, don't, we, we shouldn't mix them up mm -hmm. relative to, I uh, noticed some of the comments as well. So it's not um, it's dishonor and respect. They're two different things. We yeah. respect our parents, but dishonor a, a sixteen-year-old, a seventeen-year-old, told um, you know, mommy, I want to give my life to Christ in baptism um, this coming Sabbath. Mommy say, uh, daddy says, no, I don't think you should do that. Um, son, daughter said, daddy, I I think I want to do that. That's the right thing for me to do. Um, and the parents is not consented. The child goes. Um, a parent might say, well, you disrespect my views, but was that dishonoring me? And I, no, I don't think it's dishonoring. You see, it may not have, you, you didn't respect my view. And so you can, the parents can say, I, you disrespect my view. But to dishonor is as though, um, remember, the parents have children must obey their parents in the Lord. Yeah, you know, so that's a difference there. The word, uh, you have to, <laughs> you have to uh, create that, 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 that difference there. Um, and I know, yeah. yes, Pastor. Well, that's all. Remember, children at the age of eight, um, nine, they're living under the parents' roof. And so that respect should be shown. Yes, so, so that remember I said, the, the, the God take re he took re um, will take record of, of the decision. And so they proceeding without the yes. I, to me, I think that is dishonor. Well, um, the, we, I, I'm just sharing a view that in relative to mm -hmm. trying to show the difference between dishonor and and um respect. and and disrespect or respect you know honor and respect um dishonor disrespect trying to show the pastor france you want to share a point there yeah um because the reason why um in terms of the because the the age range we use the age range because when i was when i was explaining in terms of even question two and question three that you had asked i was using the specific number of age that you shared pastor and in terms of we that was established in terms of the eight year old and the pastor will go on in fall let the parent know that the child and the 10-year-old, so around that age, the pastor, that it is understood that the pastor would go and inform the parents. And when you said that, when you bring up the age to 17, I was even a catering for teenagers. You understand? And so therefore, a teenager would want to give their life to Jesus. And they would, they proceeded. But it, and the question asked, is that dishonor in them? I don't think so. Because the respect has been given, I shared, I said, well, I want... Mommy, I want to get baptized, but mommy may not agree because of her personal grudge, it could be, or personal opinion of the decision. She may say no. And when it comes to that with God, it is important. And it is important if we could say, well, let me honor my mother and don't accept Jesus. Would that when, what, 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 what would happen as a result? What would happen with that child now if that child does not accept Jesus? I know pastor of age person who does, didn't want their spouse to get married. Their spouse died in sin. And afterwards, they went and get baptized. So their spouse all lost. And now they are saved because they didn't accept Jesus. So in terms of yes, respect that was given to the parents, is aware that the child wants to get baptized. And the child went, it, went further to get baptized. That, that was not dishonoring the parents, actually. That was honoring God. And it's always important to honor God in certain in, in those instances. All right, in, in, well, in, in every instance, in um, well, yes, you know, well, yes. Um, even before we um, go to question five, I just want to reiterate. Now we can take that further, Pastor. There are some husbands who figure the wives must same accepting Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. you know, yeah, you, ahead, you, you're my wife, and um, if you do that, you have to go along with me. And wife takes an a different decision, and the husband will say, you dishonor me. No, that's not dishonoring the husband. When it comes to salvation, you, you inform your husband, I'm taking a decision. That is for Christ. Therefore, the husband may figure, you have dishonored me as my wife. You proceeded to, to accept Christ without my consent. Well, that may be the case, but when it comes to honoring, we have to always honor God. Pastor Charles, 
if a child is rude, <laughs> should they be allowed to give their life to Christ? You know, you know, you, you yeah. I, I guess you have heard that before. Man, no, those those children rude pastor. Man, I, I would love to baptize rude children. Have mercy. And not rude children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so of course, um, children who, um, who are rude, of course, um, we should baptize them. Um, the Holy Spirit, thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there to bring about transformation. And so children who are behaving disorderly and rude and, and so on, disrespectful, um, the Holy Spirit can, can bring that transformation, can change that child or children. And so, yes, I will, as a means of the gospel, baptize a rude child or children in the name of Jesus, <laughs> Father of God's Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, Pastor Francois. Pastor, the sin can go, you know. Would a pastor, would you, would you baptize a rude adult? And well, the <laughs> things that we don't, we don't normally term <laughs> rude, rude. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that's, when you go for children, the parents would normally say, yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't, um, I don't object to, to the child giving life to Christ, but the child is rude, yeah. you know, so meaning, uh, okay, well, when they, when they stop being rude, rude yeah. then yeah, they, they can proceed, you know? <laughs> yes. And um, as I like to concur with my colleague, <laughs> Pastor Charles, um, Jesus can deal with rude children. And Jesus specialized in dealing with rude people. For instance, Peter carried his cut last week, Jesus, for three and a half years, pa Pastor. And he didn't put it down. It was there. Peter was an arrogant young man. You understand? James and John, the son of thunder, they loved confusion, but they were with Jesus. Jesus accepted them into their fold, into his friends as and they become apostles disciples and therefore i want to have money parents your child is rude and the child want to get baptized yes let them child get let the children or child get baptized because jesus is someone who specializes as my colleague said in transforming rude children to decent children if jesus is specializing in taking rum drinkers and make them sober if jesus specializes in taking drug addicts and making them Drug followers free. or yeah. drug free. If Jesus specializes in all those in adults, Jesus must specialize in children transformation too. Amen. So yes, it is important. And as I as I we said, we reiterate earlier, um, um, baptism is just one phase. The process of educating continues, and the process of the spirit transforming will continue. Of course, and of course, there, you know there are two there are two terms that we use in. You know, theological terms. Um, one is justification, and one is sanctification. sanctification yes. The um, justification is, you know, is 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 instantaneous. Is you know, um, um, is is like it, it's it, it happens at the moment. Um, unlike sanctification, which is now mm -hmm. the process yes, right. of being made whole. Mm -hmm. You see, and that takes time. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So, yes, a rude child uh, may have some issues to be dealt with. In fact, we all have issues to be dealt with, even as parents. So, sometimes the same parents, <laughs> it's amazing. The same parents sometimes say the child is rude. You, you have someone who, um, don't want to bash anyone here, but someone lives in common land. That's rudeness to God. When God says marriage is honorable, True. you know, you, you, you fly in the face of God and you turn around and tell the pastor that the child is rude. You know, so sometimes we make some statements not realizing what we're saying. You know, we are disobedient to ourselves. We are disobedient to God. We are not doing what God says, but we are then putting those stumbling blocks, um, you know, um, ahead of our children. Yeah, well, and just, just add a little, sorry, Pastor Isaac, that probably parents, um, there are some, you have children who probably are rude. And, you know, some parents um, say, um, my, my children is rude or they the, the disorderly, do not baptize them. I encourage you, let them baptize in the name of Jesus. All right. So, Pastor is always training. Well, at this time, we, our time is running away. Our time is running away. At this time, we want to pause and have um, a promo for our crusade as it, con as it comes down, our final countdown this week. We'll have a promotion for um, our evangelistic series. <laughs> i 
sent a savior four thousand years later so that men young and old now can persons are looking for the key to a meaningful life and they've discovered it's not liquor it's not sex it's not money it's not fame it's not fortune yes the bible has the answer it is jesus christ who is the hope of the ages join me glenn o samuels in the footprints of hope walking with jesus evangelistic series live and in living colors see you We are happy to be back with you for Pastor Scorner. We've been looking Amen. at or caption here today, Children and the Decision for Christ. And with me, if you join us a little late, we have um, Pastor Stephen Francois to my extreme right and um, to my immediate right, Pastor Jason Charles. You have been doing a fantastic job in responding to your um, or questions here relative, relative to children and their decisions for Christ. So we want to continue. We have... Um, just about 15 minutes less left in our program. Um, so, should children be placed in a convert class in order to give their life to Christ? Should children be placed in a convert class before being <laughs> baptized? Pastor Charles, well, you're you ready to answer yeah. the question. <laughs> well, for me, um, I would say no. Um, once children, that's the part of this, this text in Second Corinthians 6. And verse 2, the Bible says, Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. And so once children make up their minds to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism, they should do it now. So they, they do not have to be placed in a convert class um, in, order to be, um, in order to get baptized. Once they make up their mind, okay. get them baptized. Wonderful. Pa Pastor Francois, you have something to add to that? I'll just read a text. Hebrews 4, 7 says, mm -hmm. Again, he limited it a certain day, saying, In David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if he will hear his voice, harden not your heart. So a child doesn't have to go in convert. Someone doesn't have to go in convert class to prepare them. No. You understand? And that is what the Bible says. Today, if you would hear your voice, hear his voice, harden not your heart. And that is very important. That even not just for children as well, but for adults too, Pastor. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God would be speaking to them. And God, and the reason why the Spirit of God speaks to certain people at certain time is because God knows your future. And He knows that if you don't accept Him now, and you go down the road, you can die a lost person. And because of that, God doesn't want you, viewers, to be lost who have not accepted Him as yet. And therefore, the text encourages each and every one of us. He said, today, if you would hear His voice, Harden not your heart. So does God doesn't say, no, come and go in a convert class. That's not God dealing. Okay. So we, we, <clears throat> the Bible is very clear. Now, if you happen to be in a convert class and, um, and that's where the voice comes to you, that's your moment. Yeah. You see? If you were listening to one someone um, via Facebook or some other social media platform and the, the, word of God, the word of God comes to you, that's your moment. Mm -hmm. So... It is unbiblical to suggest, for anyone to suggest, that in order to give your life to Christ, as was rightly said, be it child or adult, that one has to be in a convert class. No. The Bible, that is not supported by the Bible. 
someone must be exposed. He that believeth and is baptized. So you can believe by reading a track. You can believe after being exposed to a sermon. You can believe by someone sharing something with you. Whenever, whenever that moment comes, um, pro, we are supposed to accept Christ. Right? That's, that's, I think that's the most important thing here. So I think it's very clear on that. Um, let, let me just, just and Pastor Charles wants to add something. Yeah, let's add something. Um, the person says that they do not agree with the children or adults not receiving some training or teaching in the Word of God before baptism. Um, oh, well, hold on, hold on, Pastor. That's well. Let me just clarify. We were not talking about not giving. In fact, based upon the, the Bible, mm -hmm. you can only believe after being exposed. Yes, you you can't believe. Um, you know, you can't believe without having knowledge. knowledge yeah. Yes? Um, so, by some means, but what we're saying, that means doesn't have to be in a convert class. True. It could be you listening to a sermon on the radio. Yeah. It could be that you listen to a sermon on Facebook or YouTube or television or, or you know, someone you're just passing by the road and, and someone in what we call an open-air meeting, someone yeah. is preaching. Right? So, yes, you have to be taught. But the question was asked, um, should persons be baptized after, only after a convert class? And we're saying, no, the, no. that is not biblically supported. No. You, don't have, you have to go through a convert class for, for two weeks, for five weeks, for whatever amount of time. The Bible is not supporting that. The Bible is, is supporting that you have to be instructed. How the instruction comes may vary. Yes, we, sure. What we're talking about is not a convert class. So I just want to bring clarity to that. Yes. 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 Pastor, yes. I just want to encourage you because when Jesus called Peter and them, they were, and some of John's disciples came over to be Jesus' disciples. As, um, they heard, is when, G, when John said, Behold, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sin. One summon. One summon, and Jesus called them to follow. And that is where the Spirit of God speaks to them. And the Spirit of God would speak to us as a people. We don't, um, as I just rewrite, rewrite in, we don't have to know everything to follow Jesus, to accept and to be baptized. You understand? And that's why I say education is a process. And therefore, they say a child in the children. And I, that's why we say I spoke earlier on of the children department. It's a process for the children department. And that the child will be continue being trained. Even upstairs in the, in the adult section where we have our Sabbath school and, and so forth and lesson study, the process continues. So someone must be exposed to some form of truth through the speaking of the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, uh, you know, uh, is Bevon Sanderson had a very in in interesting comment. There, you have two. I'll take the one on top. In discussion with with dishonor, the the child could not have dishonor. The parents' wishes. Dishonor is described as bringing shame and disgrace or failure to respect an agreement. Therefore. None of these apply in this situation. I think we already covered that. That's why I said I made the distinction between dishonor and disrespect. You know, um, or, 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 or disagreeing. You could disagree, but dishonor is not a, you know. Yeah. So I think we, we did clarify that. Pastor Charles, what advice does Ellen White have for parents in relation to the children's acceptance of Christ? Ellen, do I do one for, oh, for yes. those seven events? One of our uh, uh, um, prophet to the church, one of God's prophet, Amen. and and she has several over authored over sixty books. Um, Pastor Charles, could you share at least a quote with us? Yeah, let me. I would love to share a quote from from the book Christ Child um, Guidance. Very very interesting book. Very important. She says in Child Guidance, and I quote: "God wants every child of tender age to be His child, to be adopted to His family. Young though they be, the youth may be members." of the household of faith and have a most precious experience. I love this part here. She says, the first lesson that children are to be taught is that God is their father. Indeed, God is their father. And the lesson should be given them in their earliest years. So in their earliest years, the children should be taught about God. About God, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and even the Holy Spirit, the Godhead. And she says here, fathers and mothers should teach the infant, the child, and the youth of, of the love of Jesus. Christ should, Christ should be associated with all the lessons given to children. So it's very important for parents um, to train their children uh, at a very young age. The Bible says, train up a child in the way she goes, and when he gets old, he will not depart from it. 
So it's critical that parents do their part to train the child or children in the, in the way of Christ, um, teach them to pray, um, to read um, the, Bi the Bible, um, teach them so that um, they can make that decision for Christ and giving their life to Jesus Christ in baptism. Oh, wonderful. Pastor, you have a Francois, quickly. Um, any testimonies to the church, volume 6, page 93, Alan G. White says, Parents whose children desire to be baptized have a work to do, both in self-examination and in giving faithful instructions to their children. Baptism is a most sacred and important ordinance, and there should be a thorough understanding as of its meaning. It means repentance for sin and the entrance upon a new life in Christ Jesus. And that is so important, and I agree with Sister White here. She says that the parents should have this self-introspection in regards to how they are training their children, and she admonished them to instruct them in the Lord. And that is very important, friends, and those who have children, um, even it, it, may, it may defer to a parent's a home that is not a Christian home. And if your home is not a Christian home, but yet still you are desirous that your child be trained, send them to our Sabbath school. Send them to our Sabbath school and you would see what God, how God can work with your children. You may not like somebody or you may say, well, I don't like Pastor Francois, but it's okay, it's okay. Just send them to our Sabbath school and then let our, our teachers, let, let, let God use our teachers so that they can instruct them. I'm talking about families who are, who are not, who don't have, don't have a Christian background. And if you want to get a Christian background, you can come to church, continue reading the Word of God and come over. I just want to read something here in Child Guidance, page 501.2. It says, after faithful labor, if you are satisfied that your children understand the meaning of conversion and baptism, and are truly converted, let them be baptized. So yes, as from a Christian perspective, you understand that your children is ready, let them be baptized. And also she is saying that you need to examine yourself because children sometimes just follow what they see their parents do. Okay, wonderful. So of course, as parents, um, we have a work to do. Um, and Sister Tirona is saying, if we don't train them in the way of the Lord, the world will teach them the way of Satan. That is yeah. so true. That is true yeah. So what we fail to do, the, the, um, the enemy will not um, fail to do his work. As we get ready to conclude, uh, Matthew 18, 6 says, If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, that's the NIV, to stumble, it will be better for them to have a large millstone hung around the neck and to be drunk in the depths of the sea. What is essentially Jesus saying there? Is, is Jesus causing, I mean, teaching inflicting pain on oneself? What, what's the message? <laughs> well, as, well, as Christians, um, and I will speak about parents after, um, we need to be careful offending or discouraging children um, who wants to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism. There are some children, um, probably they, they want to. They want to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism. And and there is no way anyone um, should say, leave them, um, they are too young, mm -hmm. um, or discourage them um, from giving their life to Jesus Christ. And and that goes for the parents. Um, parents should not um, discourage or offend the children if they, if they come to them uh, and say, mommy or daddy, I, I would like to give my life to Jesus Christ in baptism. There is no way um, they should offend them or discourage discouraging them from giving their life to Jesus Christ in Bec baptism. Because the text says, because uh, Jesus, uh, let me help you. Because yeah, Jesus says, if you to do if you do that, you, right. you, it's better. Hmm. Before doing that, it's better that you take a, a, a huge stone, a millstone, Mercy. and and drown yourself. No, that 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 is serious. serious. Of course, Jesus is not um, advocating hanging yourself or inflicting pain on yourself but jesus is, is just go showing us the seriousness of someone standing in the way pastor yeah, francois and yeah. you agree with that not of so? course of course pastor, of course and i'm just i just um read here it says but whosoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin and not just cause little ones to sin but lead them in sin pastor jesus saying it's best you don't best he wasn't born because the seriousness of salvation is important. That is that the emphasis that <clears throat> Christ wants to bring out for us today. The seriousness of accepting him is really and truly is important. 
And therefore, if you are, <clears throat> if anyone is standing in that in uh, in someone's way, in a child's way, to accepting Jesus, you are actually fighting a battle, a losing battle, because you're actually fighting against God. Lord have mercy, you know. And, and so, um, <coughs> spicy Alexis says children can disobey their parents if it is to obey the call of Jesus, and that's what, that, I mean. The Bible is quite clear on that, because uh, I mean, ultimately. We have to obey Jesus. And, and if, if, if it means, in fact, Peter says it in Acts chapter 5, he says, we rather obey God than man. Um, as we get ready to conclude, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Francois, a child age 12, you know, um, accepts Jesus Christ and, and gets into heaven. And when the child realizes that, that the parents didn't make it to heaven, who will take care of that child in heaven? Um, God will take care of that child. And by and matter of fact, the fact that the child is saved, God has already taken, taken care of that child. And the child being there, it, it, it shows that the child will be comfortable. It shows that since God has brought you because of you accepting him into heaven, you will be well, you, that, child, or that, that child will be well taken care of by another family or by God himself. Wonderful. Pastor Charles, um, I'm giving you the opportunity to say your final comment here with us. Um, he's just indicating me off air that he's living on on Sunday. So, your final words and pastor's corner. <laughs> okay, well, I, I would like to encourage um, parents um, to allow your child or children to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism. You know, once your child or children are so desirous in um, giving their life to Jesus Christ in baptism, um, let them do it. Um, because we see the times that we are living in. We are living in serious times. And we want the children um, to grow up in the, in the way of Christ. And so we want the children to become um, good um, role models in, in society and more. And so I would encourage parents to ensure um, that. And so the Bible says now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. And now is the time for for individuals to give their life to Jesus Christ in baptism because signs are fulfilling. Jesus will come one day to put an end to the troubles. And so the best decision children can make and anyone can make is giving their life to Jesus Christ in baptism. And let us trust in Jesus. Let us have faith in Jesus and know that God is with us in every trial in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Charles, and it is good to have you. And Pastor Scono, we were blessed by your ministry here, and we wish you God's speed as you go back to South Carib to continue working over there. So next time I'll, I'll, I'll be looking for your comments um, as we continue, Pastor Scono. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Francois, Amen. and it's good to have you today. Pastor Francois, say a word of prayer as we close off today. Almighty and eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity where we can be here today to just discuss the important decision that children have to make in their life. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us and help us, or even bless parents, O oh Lord, who have children, that they would allow them to surrender to Jesus, so let, to allow you, O oh God, do the work of transformation and renewal in their life. Bless Pastor Charles as he move on to another field. May your divine presence continue to guide and to keep him faithfully, Lord. Bless Pastor Isaac as well in his ministry. And by your grace, O oh Lord Jesus, may we all be saved in your kingdom when you come. In Jesus' lovely name. Amen.